Welcome back to a Whatever Wednesday. It's your favorite dynamic duo, Be Mars. And Shanti. And we need something extra special today, which, which is miso soup. Uh, I found this basically because I was looking at another way to cook all the bok choy we had from H Mart leftover. Oh, yeah. And I saw this cold fighting soup on Pinterest, and I thought, I bet that's so great because um, Boston is in a blizzard. And all of New England. Just had a blizzard. Just under a snow pile. Yeah. And I figured, I remember when I lived on the East Coast, I was almost always sick in the winter. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a great recipe if you guys are feeling under the weather and uh, don't want to eat chicken noodle soup every day. Yeah, because B Mars also hates chicken noodle soup. It's disgusting. I don't know why anyone likes it, but... <laughs> so we're bringing you guys this recipe to warm you up in the winter time, and it is also a pretty healthy part of our New Year's healthy series that we've been doing. Yeah. You don't have to eat a salad every day. You can eat some miso soup. Yeah, it is chock full of veggies. Should we just start cooking? Yeah, let's get into it. All right, so we have our little skillet here. Oh, you already, did you turn it on? No. No. It's gonna warm up our skillet. This is a recipe that B Mars found on Pinterest. We can link it down below, but we did make some modifications to our taste preferences and we're also tripling it because the recipe that we found was only <laughs> a single serving. And also like not enough food. Yeah. For a single serving, like. It was very, seemed like a very small portion. So if our, Steps are confusing, you can just refer to the recipe if in the wanna. description. Yeah. Uh, the title is literally cold kicking miso soup. Mm -hmm. so. It also includes a lot of garlic, and I don't know what is better for you when you're sick than garlic. Burns the bacteria, I swear to God. Yeah, it called for two cloves for like a single serving. We only did four cloves because I felt like six would be like overkill. It, it would be just a garlic soup. <laughs> yeah, it would literally be garlic soup. So this recipe calls for a couple teaspoons of oil, but we're gonna use veggie broth just to keep it extra healthy. Hmm. Just a little splash is all you need to keep it from sticking. We also cut up one whole box of mushrooms. White mushrooms? Yeah, they're just regular white button mushrooms. And yeah, and they're just sliced, thin sliced. And at the same time, we're gonna add in, this is one half of a diced white onion. And it was so potent, I was literally crying as I was shopping this. <laughs> Ain't no cancer coming for us. Yeah. <laughs> You're new here. Which video did we talk about? Then? I was just trying to remember. I think it was the spicy rice cake too. Right? Or was it the zucchini? You just have to watch all the videos and find out. <laughs> what we're talking about. I feel like someone would know better than we would know. Uh, yeah. Like someone who watches all of our bangs would be like, oh, you talked about it in like season one episode. Okay, go that other bang. I don't have my contacts in today. Living life. On the edge. On the edge. <laughs> well, no, I have glasses on, but I can't wear them when we bang because of the ring light. Yeah. That's one thing I'm so thankful that I never had to deal with as a kid. Like glasses. Getting glasses and realizing you're blind. Yeah. My vision started going in the eighth grade. I remember it specifically. I was sitting in the back of the Wait, you weren't class. born? No. Yeah. What? I didn't know you could lose your, your vision. Did yeah. that happen to me? Probably. I don't know really why. Whoa, I thought it was like you would be born like with bad vision. I, well, a lot of people are like that, but like mine, I think my mom too. Like she wasn't born with bad vision, but she like got glasses like in middle school or something. Whoa. Yeah, and I also, I remember like not being able to see, sorry, probably a lot quieter now. <sighs> I couldn't see myself like in the mirror at a dance. And I was like, why is this so fuzzy? Like I can't see, I can't like, I couldn't like spot myself in my pirouettes because like I couldn't see. Did you like freak out? No. Like, I feel like that just, like, happened to me slowly. I'd be like, no! <laughs> What's happening? It was really annoying. I couldn't read, like, notes on the board. I'd have to, like, ask people, like, what it, it said. And then did you did you have to do, um, you know, they, yeah, would they have, like, a thousand different magnifying glasses? And they're like, yeah. how's this one? How's this one? I never had to do that. Lucky. I think you start to lose your vision. It's, like, lack of nutrients to your eyeballs. Like, you weren't eating enough carrots or something? Except I never had a carrot in my life. I'm sure it's more complex than that, but yeah, kind of, yeah. But it's kind of, so this is like a crazy conspiracy theory. If you were a fellow contact wearer, let me know what you think. When I have my glasses on, I can see great. But for some reason, and I've had the same prescription for my glasses for a while, every time I go to the eye doctor for my contacts, they like up my prescription. I've heard that before. Like they, like, well, I've heard two things. So I've heard that they're trying to like, Get you, you addicted to the contract. Yeah. I mean, contact. <laughs> to the contract of contact. Yeah, exactly. You'll love a good tongue twister. <laughs> exactly. But I've also heard that um, because you're wearing glasses, you're becoming dependent on them, so then your eyes literally do get worse. No, exactly. That's 
I always believed that. And um, I remember but when I- What are you supposed to do? Just have blurry eyes? You know what I mean? Because it's, yeah. like, it's like taking birth control. Like Your body start, stops producing estrogen because you're putting estrogen in from an outside source. It's probably like, oh, like I can just depend on these glasses now. Like, Yeah, well, I didn't get contacts until college, but I wore glasses uh, my last like two years of high school. I think like my sophomore year of high school, I got glasses. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. Once I got co contacts, I was like, now I'm just gonna have to wear these every day. I remember telling my contact doctor, or my eye doctor, <laughs> um, I was like, well, I don't wanna wear these every day. I'm only gonna wear them like in dance, like when I can't see myself. Yeah. He was like, oh, no, you're gonna end up wearing them every day just because of the convenience. And then I, I've been back like maybe three times. You're supposed to go back every year, but I like try not to go back because I don't want them to like up my prescription. Yeah, and then by the time like you get older, you just can't do anything with your own eyeballs. Yeah. That's terrifying. But that's just a big conspiracy. It makes sense. It makes sense that your body would just become dependent on an outside source. It's like if you get an injury and you wear like a brace for too long, then your like body becomes like accustomed to like having outside support. Yeah. That's like so creepy to me. But have you ever broken anything? Yeah. And then your like muscle depletes? Yeah, um, <laughs> just keep saying yeah. <laughs> but no, I had this, we could talk about in a separate video. We should add in the next thing. So, okay. how much did we do? Four? This is four cloves, but if we were truly tripling our speed, it would be six cloves. But I felt like that would be garlic soup. Yeah. Okay. Pop my page. No worries. So now we're gonna cook up this garlic for a little bit until it's, it's fragrant before we add our next ingredient. What does fragrant mean? You can really smell her cooking. I don't know. Makes sense. I'm just gonna keep an eye on her. Yeah. Think we should cover it? Yeah, just for like noise purposes. Yeah. I'm just splashing in some more of this so that it doesn't stick to the bottom. Mix these good though. No sticky. Ooh, I'm dipping. But with the eyeglass thing, it's hard to tell because like I can't see without the um, glasses, obviously. So yeah. it's like I need them, but at the same time, I just feel like every time I go to the contact doctor, <laughs> eye doctor, eye doctor. <laughs> you're like making it harder for yourself. Yeah, it's, contact doctor. It's not really that like. It's more of like him upping my prescription that makes my eyes worse and worse. Yeah, yeah. and then you're there, like becoming dependent on it. Right. When you don't need it, you just need the same prescription again. Yeah, I don't know, but it's like I can see, but it's maybe, I don't know. I've also That's tried weird. to, when I go, like kind of lie and like pretend I can see really well so that he doesn't have my prescription, but like it's it'll be like a little bit fuzzy, but I'm like, I don't want to go any stronger because then my eyes are just gonna get worse. Can't you just yeah. tell them that? Or will they just like be like, no, you're getting it stronger, like whether you like it or not. Mm, yeah, maybe I should say something like, I don't wanna, can you just, well, I don't know if you can like fight it or not or. I don't know, I've tried to say before, like I just want the same prescription, but they have to give you the whole like, Eye test, test like yeah. you dilate your pupils and then you do like the thing. Like they go through the whole thing. It's like a yearly checkup that they wow, do. Wow, that. that seems like a lot of work. Yeah, I try not to go every year. I try <laughs> to skip. <laughs> it's funny, I actually have better than 2020 vision. Like I can see the like tiny lines. So can Colin on the bottom, but no one ever like, they're not like, you have 2015 vision or 2010 or whatever. They're just like, I'm like, I can keep going. They're like, no, it doesn't matter. I don't care. You have to do that. I'm to get up. I'm like, <laughs> Okay, well I would like to know like what my eyesight actually is. That's really nice, so I'm jealous. Okay. Alright, I think that we should stir this so I want to burn. I always say I kind of try to find people who have bad eyes because I have bad ears. So we Aww. can balance each other out. Yeah, makes sense. I have good ears. See? You can hear all the and I can see it. Yeah. We're like one human. <laughs> <laughs> I mean my eyes aren't really that bad. I have friends that have like are literally like Blind. Almost blind. So we're adding in four cups of vegetable broth, low sodium. It says um, water, but we figured it would be more flavorful if we just add veggie broth. So the original recipe called for one and a half cups of water or broth. Um, since we're tripling it, it should be four and a half, mm -hmm. right? Or do we need like a half cup of water? We could use that. All right. <laughs> Yes, it is. So now this is like four cups of veggie broth and plus a half cup of water. So yeah. just to make the ratios correct. And then we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of tamari, which is basically soy sauce without gluten. Okay. And then do you want to add in the tofu or let it boil a little bit? Oh yeah, let's just add in the tofu. So these are um, 
This is almost a whole package. So this is nine ounces, which is, and then I think the package you buy is usually like 12, 11, 12. The one I had was 15. Oh wow, you got that big boy. It, it must've been a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like two thirds of a package. Yeah. Uh -oh, Honestly, I feel like with cooking, you guys can just eyeball things. <laughs> Unlike baking preference. where you need to follow a recipe. I agree. You know? Unless maybe with the seasonings, you yeah. probably want to be more exact. But you know, we, we're like onion girls. We like to add a little onion when people don't, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. You gotta live your life how you want to, guys. All right, I'm gonna cover this and bring up the heat a little bit. And what were we just talking about? We were gonna start talking about our broken bones. Oh yeah, wait, first I wanna ask you one more thing about eyeballs. Okay. Continue My dad was literally blind mm -hmm. and the military paid for LASIK eye surgery. LASIK? Yeah. Eye surgery? Have you ever thought about that or would you ever get that? Or I don't know. Need it? Well, I feel like I'm not like blind enough to like need it, you know? Yeah. Like, Have you heard what they do? Oh, I've seen videos and it freaks me out. I cannot believe your eyeball is open and you are awake. I know! I can't handle that. Don't they like cut like an incision like along your eye or something? I Don't they like, I think they scrape peel. off the, a layer with like a oh, laser, no. don't they? It, yes, it's like the most terrifying thing I can ever think I about know. in my life. And apparently you can't like feel it at all. Like doesn't hurt. Oh, that's just the idea. But yeah, I think I would start freaking out. Literally in the chair, just like, uh, uh, unless they put me on some crazy. It's freaky that you're awake. If I get in, I could never. How some people also are awake during like wisdom teeth surgeries and stuff. Me. We yeah, were, we were talking about you're this. You're a psychopath. <laughs> like, oh, I can't even think about that. But like your eyeball, I can't, I could barely put contacts in when we had to wear them for like a dance piece once. It took me two days to figure out how to do it. Yeah, well, I feel like once you, you just have to get used to like touching your eyeball. Like that, when you're a contact wearer, you have to like get used to it, I guess. <sighs> but um, if I hadn't seen the surgery, I probably would be okay with it. Yeah. Like I've never seen a wisdom teeth surgery. If I had, then that would, would have probably yeah, messed you up. Yeah. It's funny because I figured you had watched it because you like to watch like certain weird stuff. Weird like surgery type stuff. Or like, don't you like the pimple popping? Uh, me and Chantal have very opposite views on Dr. Pimple Popper and like that whole <laughs> genre of I love Dr. Video. Pimple Popper. It's so satisfying. I'm surprised you don't like that. Oh no. I think it's just like dirty to me. Like, Yeah, it's gross. There was one that came up on our suggested, like you, walk, you watched it on our mukbang channel. I can always tell, it's funny, like we'll forget to switch back to our personal and watch stuff on the mukbang like channel. So the suggested videos or whatever we watched. Yeah. So for a while it was like so much Poshmark stuff because you just like made oh, a Poshmark. Yeah. And then all to watch something or whatever. And then an earwax video came up. Oh my god! Did you see that? Did you watch that? I went through so many earwax compacted earwax extractions. Yes, one of those popped up, is. and you could <laughs> see like the black like yeah, turned into like wax. a huge black clump of earwax. It's and so that was satisfying. in the thumbnail. Yeah. I was so mad. I was just like, <laughs> you guys should check out those if you like some like gnarly pimple popping weird body videos, you would love earwax extractions. <laughs> I mean, I bet it would feel satisfying. Like thinking about ha having that much, you have a crayon in your ear. No kidding. A literal crayon. They're like thick. Yeah. Ugh. So satisfying. Oh my God, speaking of gross videos, this is a little bit off topic, <laughs> but I'm just gonna say it anyways, cause it's maybe you- We'll go back to Broken somewhere. Bones in a second. Yeah. <laughs> um. So PB Bunny 97 I don't know if you guys follow her but I love her she posted on her Instagram that she was doing the vampire facial with dr. Barrett I think in Beverly Hills and it's basically microneedling on your face and it uses your own blood plasma to like rejuvenate your skin but then I started I was like oh I want to see if it's there and then he posts his surgeries on his story and I watched Max has told me about it. like he has this, like breast augmentations and everything yeah Max watches them it's so fascinating I could not stop watching them he does he had so many different boob jobs and like tummy tucks. The tummy tucks are kind of gross because it's literally like chunk cutting off slabs of your skin, which I'm, I don't know. But the boob jobs are so fascinating. It looks so easy. Really? Yeah, they just cut off the nipple and like spread it open and just pop in the implant. Sew back up. Oh my god. <laughs> I could never, I could barely watch like the fake surgery scenes in Grey's Anatomy, let alone a literal real one on a Snapchat. Oh. At I wonder first, does he only do nipple ones? Because there's like some you can get under the boob and some you can get through your armpit. And like I wonder if he's yeah. like, today I'm doing an armpit one. Like, check well, it out. he did do some like 
implants with a lift, which did seem more complicated, but I, for the most part, I only saw the nipple ones. But his nipples that he drew back on, is this gonna get demonetized? We're talking about nipples? No, this is, this is uh, educational. Well, anyways, his, he had like zero scarring on all of his patients. Like he was so good. He does a five layer closure. Yeah. Never knew that was a thing. Five layer. I heard that your nipple could suggest. die. And it leaves your body for too long. There's a chance of it just That's terrifying. dying. Oh, he had some patients that, um, this was like their third time going under. Like it was like a boob job that was like botched and he was like fixing it for like the third time now. And I was like, damn, I can't imagine like going under that many times. Oh my God, no. Anyways, we should probably add on the next thing. Yeah, that's the bok choy. That's it? Yeah, the white miso paste you do last in the scallions you just put on top. This recipe is easy. I love it. All right, so now that our soup is simmering, we're gonna add in the bok choy. She had mentioned putting in the bok choy before the broth, but me and Chantal hate when bok choy is super wilty. Yeah, I'm not a fan at all. It's like when it gets like that dark green and the bottom just turns to mush. I hate that. I hate that too. And also, it takes away all the nutrients. Get on in there. Sorry if this conversation is a little too graphic for you guys. We can bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's so interesting. But it kind of goes along with the pimple popping. It's just like gross like body videos that I like. Yeah. But for some of them, I'm just so fascinated by this guy. Like Max is too. Oh my god. You guys should like talk about this. Because he tries to talk to me about it. And I'm like, literally, I will <laughs> not make out with you for two weeks if you keep like talking to me about this. Is it's that like, how you feel right now? With me talking about uh, it? No, we're not making out. Not tonight, at least. <laughs> um, well, anyways, for some of them, I feel like if the areola is, like, big enough, <laughs> if he has, like, enough room for the nipple, he only does half of it. And then he, like, has enough room so to, So he like, makes your nipple smaller? No, like, he doesn't take up the whole thing. He only cuts around oh. it, and then he puts the implant in. Oh. So there's just, like, a flapping? Yeah, and then he only, you only have, like, a partial scar on the bottom. But he had no scars, I swear. This guy knows what he's doing. So I should get my boob job from him? Yeah, I'm thinking about getting a boob job now, too. <laughs> like, it's so easy. It just looks so, yeah. It's crazy how much... Like, think about being in the first 10 years of something when people, like, first started doing boob jobs and they would use, like, was it saline? And if that popped in your body, like, you could die. Or the saline, the safe one, and they would use something else. Silicone? Silicone. I really don't know. There, I forget what they first used that wasn't safe, but, like, literally, if your boob popped, you could die. If it, like, melted into your body. I'm pretty sure saline, if it pops, it, it's just, like, water. It just, like... Yeah, it goes, like your body just like absorbs it. I can't remember which ones are dangerous, but like think about just being like, you know what? My, my boobs are worth the risk of dying. Yeah. Like, but somebody, somebody had to do that for them to be able to like, get right. it. Want to add the miso paste? Yeah, it's hot. Sorry, I'm struggling over here. Okay. Yeah. You yourself? I got this um, miso paste at the last time we went to H Mart and I was so excited for it. I never even knew that you could buy miso That's paste like, like this. I know, I've only bought it in like a tube for like miso soup. Yeah, base. Spray tube. So this is one. I don't know if I mentioned this, but um, this lady who wrote the blog said that you should add the miso paste last, so then it keeps most of the good bacteria. Yeah, because um, miso paste is basically fermented soybean paste. This is like kind of big, heaping tablespoons. I guess I should chop that off. But I'm sure good bacteria is really good for you when you're sick too. Yeah, absolutely. Your stomach. Also, this is a lot of... um. Sodium, you know, get your. Yeah, you should eat this and then drink like up. a gallon of water. Yeah, probably. This smells really good. I'm just trying to get this miso off this spoon. Yeah, okay. oh, I'm gonna turn this off so we mm -hmm. don't kill the bacteria. All right, so at the end, since you just turned off the heat, we're going to top it off with some green onions, which is also super good for you when you're sick because it's part of the onion family. Dun, 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 dun. I have to put a spoon. Oh, thank you, thank you. Mmm, delicious. You want a little bit more? That's good for now. I can always scoop her. Just for the steam purposes, I'm gonna cover this up. Or should we move it out of frame? That's fine. I need a little bok choy in that page. Ready? Cheers. Cheers. It's really hot. Mm. Oh my god, I'm so impressed. I love it. It's so flavorful. It is. I honestly thought it was going to be a super mild soup and it's amazing. Uh huh. A super mild soup. 
It's funny because I'm so used to eating spicy things. I'm like, oh, if it's not spicy, it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good, but this is really great. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Especially because not everyone likes spicy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, option. You're right. Mm. That was so easy, too. Yeah. Honestly, I, I'm really loving our recipe game lately. Me too, I love it so much. Mm. Yeah, ever since we got into the flow of making recipes, if you guys are new here, we were just in a Christmas show for a month straight and it was hard for us to go out during the day and pick up food and bring it home, so we just started cooking at home every day. Mm -hmm. And like preparing, we really had to prepare for our videos. Right, and so ever since we've been in that flow, I really love making home cooked meals. And also we started doing it uh, for like New Year's Eve, like goals. Ha, resolution. Yeah, mm -hmm. like being healthy for the new year, you know? I feel mm -hmm. like that's a lot of people's goals. Mm. I'm so happy right now. This is delicious. This is just a last minute idea too. Yeah, I'm so glad you found this recipe. We should really just always go to H Mart and pick up it forces unique us things to like, yeah. think of things to do. And then find ways we can use it. I have to really slurp this right now, guys, because it's so hot. I know some people love the slurping and some people hate it. So just bear with me until this cools down. This is like what's up. You want to finally talk about our broken bones? Yeah. <laughs> Have we talked about that before? I don't think so. Mm -mm. I remember mentioning it and then being like, oh, we'll save that for another video. Hmm. Uh, sorry about talking about gross things for the first 10 minutes of this video. Mm-hmm. I like the visual. Mm -hmm. It's gross. We didn't show them anything. Yeah. But I think if we did like an insert clip here. <laughs> oh, God. Just scare everyone to death. Yeah, especially while we're eating, they'd be like, click off right away, mm -hmm. unsubscribe. Mm. So I've broken my arm twice. Same arm. Same arm, same place? Mm, very close. How'd you do that? The first time was that I was in like the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. I lived in Ohio at the time and we had a huge wooded area behind us. So I used to run in the woods all the time with my friends and I tripped over a log and I landed on a different log like a tree that had fallen over and there was a branch sticking up and like hit my arm Ooh. and then I hit it like everything kind of went like whatever and I broke my arm right by my growth plate so Ooh. they were afraid like my arm was not gonna grow <laughs> oh my but imagine if I had a short arm Ooh. dance career over <laughs> like yeah. literally but uh, it ended up being fine thank god but I had that cast on for a minute. I had like the full, even though I broke all the way down here, I had the full arm one because they were afraid. And I wanted to really make sure it like healed quickly so that yeah. I wouldn't have a short arm. And the second time. Did it look bad? Like was it like sticking out or? Mm -mm. It wasn't, it was just, just hurt. Really fat, like it swelled up. Oh really? Yeah. And then, and the second time was my senior year of high school. We had a, performance that we did so I was in the highest level of the academy so they did they had us put on solos for the company it was for Bally West mm -hmm. so it's a school that's connected to a professional company and then they would have us do solos and they could be like oh we want this girl to be like a trainee at our company or not I think I do remember this so did I tell it on here I know I've told you it for sure I can do it long story short yeah, basically they put down tap marley, which is a different kind of marley. It's more slippery than what we wear, what we use in typical dance classes, because they can do like, like the slides and flaps and everything. So everyone was slipping all night long, and I had a labayadere solo. At the end, there was like a turn sequence from one corner to the end. Oh no! And by the end, I had so much momentum. I had to do what's called a lame duck in ballet, but it's basically where you, so you're turning on, uh, say your right leg. And then you basically sweep your other leg out and put it under you. Yeah. So you so you like replace your leg. Like you're using one leg and then you like replace it with the other. Yeah. And with the momentum of spinning, I swept myself basically from underneath myself. Like when I went to go put my lame duck leg down, it was just like, and I fell backwards. And I'm left-handed, so my left arm is probably way stronger. But I caught myself with my right, Oof. and I just like 
no. broke it under my body weight. Oh my god. But again, like it wasn't like bone sticking out or anything. It was just like super fat and I broke it right here. So the other one I broke on like my gross, but like basically almost like my wrist. And the other one I broke right here. Wow. And that's so weird. Maybe and then it had been weakened since uh as a child. Yeah, since it had um been in a cast, you know, and previously broken. I don't know, because they say when your bone heals it heals stronger. Really? But it was my gross plate before, so I don't know if that makes a difference. Because like, if you look at an X-ray of my arm, where I broke it is there. It's like a darker white than the rest of my arm, from where the bone like mends itself. Yeah, isn't that weird? That's cool. I had to wear a cast in the Nutcracker, but I was a boy, so it didn't matter because I was wearing a long sleeve tunic. Oh, there, that works. I'm surprised you could still dance with a broken arm. It was a lower. Oh, so I was just like, what if you fell on it again? Then I'd be screwed. Yeah, that'd be bad. <laughs> By the way, I feel like we should say this if for any newcomers here. Mm. We are eating Spicy King's kimchi mm -hmm. along with our soup. The soup is so good. It is. Just have to reiterate that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're sick, you should really try this. Absolutely. Or it's, cold or anything. Yeah. Hit in a spot. It's so mild, so I feel like you could just eat bowls and bowls and bowls of it. Might be hard if you don't have a Korean marker or Asian grocery store near you to find me still place, but I bought it before at a regular grocery store. It was in like a tall tube. Mm -hmm. I it, wonder if you could order it like on Amazon or something too. Maybe. I feel like everyone's got that prime now. Yeah. I wonder if it has to be refrigerated though. Um, yeah, I don't know. Did people sign your cast? Yeah. I had a purple cast and had people sign it in Silver Sharpie. So extra. <laughs> you can only use Silver Sharpie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I carried it around because I was like, you're not f***ing up my cast. Yeah. <laughs> it's aesthetically pleasing right now. That's so funny that you did that. Did you break any bones? Yeah. So when I was like three or four, I broke the same collarbone twice. Oh my God. What? I broke my brother's collarbone. <gasps> How'd you do that? No, I'm telling you first, but that's funny because the collarbone is like a hard like break like it's like really painful to heal really because you can't cast it or anything oh yeah i think it's an easy bone to break though because it is i i don't remember exactly but it's just like uh floating here i think really yeah so it is a typical bone to break as a kid that's what i heard bone. yeah that's so funny yeah so i've never heard of anyone else that broke their collarbone really i broke it twice um Jesus. it's funny that i broke my arm twice and you broke your collarbone twice yeah it was the same break though i'm pretty sure it's that you can still like if you feel it it like feels different than the other one like this one is like lower if you like rub wait right here yeah if you uh, feel it, this one is lower yeah yeah it like goes like weird um but the i don't really know the order initially occurred i don't even really remember this um one time I was sleeping over my aunt's house and I, she put me on like my cousin's bed and I rolled off the bed, broke my collarbone, and then I was in a sling for a long time. They put you in a sling? Yeah, I was in a sling, I remember. And then once that healed, I, I don't know which one was before, but once the first break healed, I was playing on the stairs with my cousins and I like fell down the stairs. <laughs> Oh my god! And then I was back in a sling. And I remember, like, that could be, like, detrimental. You could have broken your neck. Yeah. I'm like, got yeah. permanent brain like damage. yelling at you now for, like, what you did when you were a child. I know. <laughs> um, Jesus. Uh, yeah, but I don't really remember that because I was so little. Um, I also have a stretch fracture on my L5 vertebrae um, that I got when I was 12 or 13. Mm. From It was from gymnastics. I did gymnastics and dance at the same time. I would literally leave gymnastics and go straight to dance. And I feel like it was just like too much stress on my back, so much like bending and like in dance doing arabesques and stuff. Yeah. Um, so then it's I couldn't- all lower back. Yeah, I couldn't dance for like two years or something. And wow. Yeah, I was so sad. I couldn't do anything for two years. And I- Your spine is scary. If you, you mess, mess up your spine. spine. Yeah. Well, okay, so I can describe where the fractures were. It was, so like, this is like, the vertebrae and then there's like this is like the disc and then there's bones like sticking out yeah. you know and i broke those two bones you know yeah and then so because it was like weak from the stress fracture it was also like slipping forward partially 
So you almost had a slip disc. It, it's not a slip disc, it's like the whole vertebrae like slipping. Oh my god. You know? My dad had two slip discs, he had to get surgery. Like the disc it's is like the squishy scary. part. Yeah. It's, it's like in between the bone. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it was the whole thing like pressing, pushing forward. And it, interesting. Did that paralyze you? I don't know. If it, well, okay, let me explain the whole <laughs> thing. So I had to wear this huge back brace. It was called the Boston Overlap Brace. I remember this. It was from like literally underneath my boobs to like my pubic bone, like huge brace. And it like cinched in at the sides like a corset. So it was like, <laughs> and I couldn't literally like move, breathe. I was just like this. And I hated wearing it so much. I never wore it because I'm a little brat. Uh -huh. Basically my spine never healed bone on bone. It healed with a fibrous union in between the bones, you know? So I still like don't technically have like bone on bone. That's crazy. Yeah. Isn't it annoying, like, when you were a kid, the, like, bad decisions you would make and how they affect you as an adult? No kidding. Like, like why? Like, like uh, my boss was just telling me he didn't really, like, brush his teeth as a kid, and he has seven cavities right now. And he's like, I know I picked up the pace <laughs> later on in life, but it was just too late. I broke my brother's collarbone. Uh, he must have been, like, three. I'm, uh, like, uh, three years older than him. We are, do you remember the movie The Aristocats? Love the Aristocats. Love the Aristocats. So good. Me and my brother love that movie too. And you know, like the final scene when they're like playing on the piano, all the cats yes. and stuff. Me and my brother like jumping on the bed, Aww. and then I like double bounced his ass. He flew and hit the dresser. Oh my god! <laughs> Broke his collarbone. But he was so young. He was like three or two or. He was young enough where he wasn't speaking. Sorry. You know, fully. He'd just go to my mom and be like, "Ow, ow," and my mom would be like. I don't, like, I don't know, honey. Like, I don't see any scratches. Like, I don't understand. Like, yeah. Wait, I think that happened to me, too. Yeah. I was like, my arm hurts. And she was like, I don't, I don't know. And then, like, three days later, finally, my mom took my brother to the hospital. And they're like, his collarbone's broken. She was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Freaked out. So then any time in my future, when we, anything would happen to his mom, like, we're going to the hospital. Let's go. Like, yeah. <laughs> right away. <laughs> got some broken bones, definitely. Yeah. Something's happening. Oh, my God. Wow, it's funny. Did you feel bad? I don't know. I don't remember it. Mm. Mom told me about with the uh, my spine fracture. If it got worse, if it like didn't heal, they would have to do surgery and fuse the bones together. But like, I had fibrous tissue heal. Yeah. Oh, the other thing, when I broke my back, I had to go to physical therapy, and it was basically just like core strengthening exercises, like sit ups, and like I would do like supermans and like strengthen my back and stuff. I never did them. I was such a little. Rat. <laughs> yeah, I know. I um wasn't so much like, like I brush my teeth and stuff, but I remember I got braces when I was too young. I still have baby teeth, but I just went to like bad doctors and stuff because the military pays for like cheap Germans. doctors. Like all of your stuff is free, but it's always like people who literally suck. Like my wisdom teeth story is horrendous. But so they gave me braces when I still had baby teeth. I moved, so like I only had them for not even a year. And the guy was like, um, you still have baby teeth coming in. Like, why do you have braces? This is stupid. They're going to move when your baby teeth come out. Yeah, what? So then they took the braces off and gave me a retainer. And then I had four retainers and I kept losing them. Oh, well, I, I remember yeah, distinctly. This is classic child. One of them I threw away on like my cafeteria tray. And I literally dug through the trash trying to find it because I knew my mom would be so mad. You couldn't find it? Couldn't find it. Another time, we're at like a fancy restaurant with a ton of people. I wrapped it in a napkin and put it down. And then left, and I'm sure someone threw it away. Yeah. And then one time, I put it on my nightstand, and it was gone when I woke up. So I know the dog ate it. I know <laughs> to this day because I remember moving from Ohio, and thinking like, I'm gonna find that retainer right now. Like either the dog ate it, or the cat like played with it. But like, I know I put it there. Yeah. You know, because I know because sometimes I wouldn't sleep with it because again I was a little brat and like didn't want to do what I was told. Mm -hmm. And so I remember moving from Ohio and like all of our furniture was being packed up and I was like in my room sitting there watching them be like, is that a retainer? Is that a retainer? Like whatever. And it, not, it was never found. So I was like, oh, the dog ate it for sure. But he would eat like boxes of crayons and like Halloween candy with wrappers on it. So it's yeah. not super out there that he would. But yeah, after like the fourth one, I don't remember how I lost it. My mom was like, you're having crooked teeth. I'm not paying for it anymore. Like, yeah, it's so expensive. I never, I have a metal retainer. I had a clear retainer that I loved wearing. Um, just because it was so much more comfortable than my metal one, mm -hmm. and I don't know, I lost it somehow. I literally don't know where it went, but I still have my metal, the same metal one that I always had. I only had the metal one. I wish I had the plastic one still. Should we wrap her up? 
Um, I was just finishing my second bowl. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna finish this, but we're already at like 40 minutes probably, so. Yeah, we can oh. say bye. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed this healthy vegan miso soup, especially if you're cold. Mm. I mean, if you have a cold. <laughs> Or if you are, if you are cold, cold. Yeah, yeah, it works either way. Uh, if you are going to try it and you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And what do you want them to comment below, Shanti? Mm, like they can tell us if they've ever broken a bone. Yes. And I feel like a lot of people haven't. Yeah, and let us know if you like gross videos like I do. Yeah, if you're a pimple popping queen or you know you're a sane <laughs> person like me. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, let us know also what um, recipes you want us to make next, because I'm loving this cooking series. Yeah. Except we might do a Jersey Mike soon. Yeah, we might do Jersey Mike's next. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Whatever Wednesday out.